and this was what he had to say. Uh, this is Joe Osewusu with some MPs from the MPP side. We invited you here this morning because of some publications that have gone haywire in respect of the leadership of the majority caucus. We are here to inform you and through you to the world that the publication that are going wrong is not true, it's, not fa it's false, that the caucus, the majority caucus, has not made any changes in its leadership. The majority caucus has not contemplated making any changes to its leadership, and that we tell the whole world, Ghana, to ignore any such publication. And I want to assure you that we have confidence in the leadership as they are, and the status quo shall remain. We are aware that upon the nomination of one of the deputy whips as a minister, a replacement will be made. That replacement will be made by the caucus when we have had the opportunity and the time to consider the appropriate replacement. This is all the information we want to share with you and to, through you, tell the world that the leadership of the majority caucus has not changed, we have not contemplated any change, and we do have no intention to um, effect any changes in the leadership of the majority caucus. Which constitution that regulates MPP? The Parliament of Ghana has adopted standing orders which places the selection and, and change or otherwise of leadership in the hands of the caucus and not anybody outside Parliament. The new standing order. The new standing why, do we, that, why do we not see the current leadership of the majority doing the press conference as it is now, but it's you? They are busy in the chamber, and it's about them. It is about them. The rest of us must stand up for them. They have led us effectively and efficiently, and the rest of us must stand up for them. And indeed, <laughs> it doesn't need the leaders to say that we have not taken a decision. It is we, the members, caucus, we the caucus. We have not taken any such decision. We are not contemplating any such decision. Mr. Speaker, is there an external attempt to remove or say chairman suppose you are speaker of your party, the leader of your party? I'm not aware of any such thing. Nobody has discussed that with the caucus. And since nobody has the power to do that outside the caucus, there may be rumors and intricacies but the caucus in parliament is not aware of any attempt to remove anybody. Well, so <laughs> this is open defiance of the party, the new patriotic party. And this was led by none other but the first deputy speaker of parliament, Joseph Oseusu, somebody they can't touch. Once you nominated her, him as first deputy speaker, you can change your front bench, you can't touch him. He stays there as first deputy speaker until his term is done. So he is the one who addressed the press. Now, typically, what you know is that the party will nominate somebody to occupy a position as leader or whip or whatever. What had happened was that Lydia Sarah Malassan, who was, who was member of parliament for Ayawa, so West Gorgon, had been uh, nominated to take over a position, a ministerial position. She was one of the deputy whips, so she needed to be replaced. But when they got to the party headquarters to hold uh, a, a meeting, the meeting that was held. Uh, remember the meeting that was held a few days ago where they announced the campaign team? Now, yeah, when they got there, they realized that there was, as part of the agenda, a leadership change <laughs> there when the majority got there. Then they realized, hey, so these people are planning a majority a change in the leadership. And that was the reason they organized this press conference. But what he said and what the party were planning to do was two different things. This was the majority saying, now we decide who leads us, not the party. But he didn't end it there. They took it to the floor of parliament and attempted to use the new standing orders to get the speaker to rule that nobody outside parliament can change the leadership in of any caucus, nobody outside, not even the party, not the president, not the vice president, not a uh, flag bearer, nothing. 
But the speaker didn't give him the ruling he was looking for. This was the, the ruling of the speaker on that matter. I have listened, and I know that the parties are having problems with this new definition of the leaders. That is only where this confusion is coming from. The old order referred to party or parties. But this new one is not referring to the party, but caucuses. The old order defined the majority leader to mean a member of parliament designated by the party or parties holding majority of the seats in the House as their recognized leader in the House. Now, this new order says majority leader means a member of parliament designated by the majority caucus as their leader in the house. Designate means appoint. Now, the same standing orders talks about the majority caucus. And it says majority caucus means the members of the party or parties that have the largest number of seats in the house. I really don't see the difference. Well, so that's the speaker. Uh, so the speaker disagrees with him, and the speaker says that it is the party that makes the decision, not you, those who are, or those of you who are in parliament. Well, so having sense that a meeting was called, then in the meeting, according to reports, before they could even start talking about the issue, say Chairman Sabons who stood up, took a written speech, speech written by him in his handwriting, and starts reading, and then concludes by saying, "Me." I don't want problem. Let's leave the matter here. You're thinking about the unity of the party. If I am in the eye of the storm, let's forget it. So I resign as minority majority leader. Okay. I'll come back and play what he did in parliament when he got there the next day. But this is Joe Osewusu responding to the decision of uh, Oseche Mensa Bonsu. And Alaska will share the video with you. He has been a fantastic leader, an extremely hard-working person, and I would have wished that he stayed on to the end. What do you think got him to do this? Because it came as a surprise to many, I'm sure, including you. So did it come to you as a surprise? Yes, it did. Yeah. But as to what got to him, I'm sure we we'll better let him explain. Yes. I'm sure moving forward, the caucus will discuss all the ramifications of um, the effects of our leader resigning and the process of selecting or electing a new one. We'll discuss all that and if there are any implications that would have negative impact on our caucus, we may decide, uh, we may plan um, a route that will keep us together. Again, I'm not sure I'm the most experienced one, but I'm happy working as a deputy speaker and I have no desire to move to the... Uh, majority leadership position. Uh, having had discussion with him in that respect, I'd like to discuss this uh, with him the manifesto committee work versus. Uh, but the manifesto committee's suggestion or was made to him before he resigned. At that time, he had not contemplated resigning. So I don't think it would have caused any uh, defect in his work. As anybody of who has been close to him knows, he's extremely hardworking and he can sit from morning to morning if there's work to be done. Uh, essentially, the, he, at this point, you realize that Joe Osewusu had, as is famously said in local English, degassed because he realized that it didn't work. The man had changed his mind. So he's, you could see that he was taken by surprise. In fact, they said all of them in the meeting were taken by surprise. They were ready to fight for I'll say Chairman Sabonsu. But I'll say Chairman Sabonsu, when he got there, resigned before they could put up any fight. So that was the end of it. Alaska will show you a video of what transpired on the floor yesterday. Because when he got there, there was an attempt to try to come get him to occupy his old position. He said, No, <laughs> I'm no more leader. I'm sitting here. 
at your back. I'm watching you. No problem. So you can see the video of him sitting there, deciding that my leadership is done. I have been. It's great to have served you, but I am done. So now he's no more. He, he no more occupies a position. And I think that's Habib Idris, who is, uh, I think, the whip, the a deputy whip, one of the deputy whips. Frank cannot embrace the whip. Uh, they were trying to convince him to. He says no, but because he's not a leader. There are a few changes that have happened. Um, in fact, there's a new deputy leader because now Alexander Afanyomak is like I said, I was coming to him. He is now the leader of the majority caucus. Alexander Afanyomak Kings has uh, quite a history. I said he's one of the most effective hatchet men in parliament. When it is failing, then he stands up. So he's the last tool to deploy when everything else has failed. And for days now, he's been holding up one of the most popular bills parliament has ever pushed. That's the anti-LGBTQI plus bill. It's a bill that has popular support among the citizenry. So he's been trying to hold it up. Of course, there's been several attempts to try to water down portions of it, but the sponsors have resisted and the speaker has supported the bill. So he's been doing that in the absence of the speaker until the speaker came sat down and said, boss, 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 withdraw all these amendments and let's move on. Uh, that was where that message did come into him. Now, well, there are speculations in Parliament as to exactly what happened to uh, Osechi Men Sabonsu. And the speculations are carried by no other group than the minority. This is my good friend, Comrade Ibrahim Mutala Mohamed. It has to do with forcing the man out. Because if the question, I, I guess you ask him the question, why was he the one addressing the press on that matter? If indeed there was some possible changes in the leadership and there was the need for the press to be, you know, addressed, it ought to have been done by the leadership of the majority caucus. Unfortunately, they took it out. We are picking some information that he's not a happy person. And the information we've got is that he was virtually forced out, he was unwilling to go. The information I also picked reliably is the fact that he wanted to be made the Minister for Foreign Affairs. And I'm told the current Minister for Foreign Affairs intend contesting for some position within the subject. And therefore, going and leaving the ministry and was going to be instrumental in a campaign, be it as it may. Yes, that's. Now, that story is also one that is coming up now. That, uh, you know, Dr. Bomia has made lots of promises to lots of people. Now that he has the leadership. In fact, he said he's promised about like five people, five MPs alone in parliament. Three prominent ones. They say, uh, even Joe Weiss is one. He's promised to say Chairman Sabunsu. He's promised the education minister. Napo, I think they said one other uh uh, what they call is a running mate, right? Uh, running mate Rani position. Mate. So they said he was promised originally that he would take over the foreign affairs ministry position because Shelly Ayokobochi wants to take up a position in the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. The Commonwealth. Well, that did not materialize. Now he's being put in charge of uh, is a manifesto committee. Uh, there are questions about whether or not he would actively work in that position but the real debate comes back to what was raised when i recalled uh, honorable haruna idrisu and honorable muntaka were replaced as leaders in the minority question is who makes that decision anyway dr rashid dramani joins us good morning doc and i hope you